Please can't help myself. Sorry. It's just good. It's just good stuff. How's everybody? Happy Monday. I'm up here in the uh, mountains. I'm back in Colorado and I wish I could show you outside here. The, the bright golds and oranges and everything are out there right now. It's, it's fantastic. I'm going to talk about persuasion, particularly his uh, pers uh, Cialdini techniques today. Um, has everybody... Has everybody read Dr. Dini's book, Fluence, The Psychology of Persuasion? It's a very good book. Uh, it, it, it's a really good book. The first thing he talks about is uh, in the introduction. I can admit it freely now. All my life, I've been a patsy. For as long as I can recall, I've been an easy mark for the pitches of peddlers, fundraisers, operators of one sort or another. Truly, only some of these people have dishonorable motives. The others, representative of charitable agency, uh, for instance, have the best of intentions. Why, why is it that a request stated in a certain way will be rejected, while a request that asks for the same favor in a slightly different fashion will be successful? Read this book if you haven't already. It's fantastic. Um, I, owe, I have a mind map uh, of charge. Aldini, but I think there's a couple of things he could have incorporated into it. He took six basic uh, that he wanted to talk about um, scarcity, uh, authority, social proof, likability, um, um, uh, reciprocity, compliance, and um, incorporating these with your words when you speak with people every day in sales, in real estate, whatever you sell. Um, makes you different, makes you stand out, makes you unique. You're in control. And I can tell you, it builds up your confidence too when you, when you have a sales system, when you use the right word. So that's where we're going to go to today. Um, uh, let me show you guys a little something I'm working on. Someone has something in the chat here. What is it? Uh, no, nothing. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. Marnie is coming. A lot of people coming on today. Great. Um, this is what I was working on. I'm going to share my screen here with you guys for, for a second. Uh, did I lose it? There it is. Uh, that's not it. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Can anybody see my screen? Thumbs up. Okay, thank you. This is something I was working on. Have you guys ever worked a um, a word cloud? I took the word persuasion or sales, and I thought of all the other words that I could put it that in my mind define uh, relate to the word sales and persuasion, and made up this little. It's called a word cloud. And um, anybody have any suggestions that I should add to this word cloud? I have uh, compliance, persuasion, sales, suggestion, power of suggestion, influence, convince, wealth, negotiation, bargaining, and guts. I put in every word I could possibly, I could possibly think of. Anything missing? You guys are quiet today. What's going on? When I say the word sales, what words come to mind? Money. Unfortunately, some negative words. <laughs> really? Oh, that's that's true. What about the? Uh, well, you say the actually word. more more Im images of who is a salesperson, you know, right out of the shoot. Not not related to this group. It, it really depends on the, I guess, on your perspective. Uh, I love sales. Sales has given me a great life. It has given me freedom. Um, it has given me confidence that I didn't have at one time in my life. It's given me great things. I guess if you go to a prospect and you say the word sales, though, what, what, is that, what, is, what do you think that really means to them? What do you think, what do you think comes to mind? Pressure. Pressure. Not a lot of negative words, right? Yeah, Manip obnoxious. Manipulative, overpowering, right? I mean, I think I'm the only father in the world. When I when my kids were born, I said, hey, uh, uh, gee, I hope they grow up to be salespeople because I, I kind of like it. 
I kind of like to have this power of uh, suggestion and influence with people. Getting it's someone your, to it's see your, your su- side it's of the your story. superpower. <laughs> it is a su- it is a superpower. It, it's a wonderful superpower. It can make you um, it can make you stronger. It can make you speak up in situations where maybe you were, oh, I don't want to, I better not say anything. I don't need that attention or, or, you know, uh, it, 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 it allows you unlimited income. I can tell you that categorically. If you, if you have that skill set. absolutely. So I guess it depends on who you speak to about it, right? Definitely can be negative words. Let's say, let's do a little open forum here. And then we're going to talk a lot about uh, Dr. Dini's um, different psychological triggers of persuasion and how we, and I have a wonderful mind map here. In fact, let me uh, get it right now. Have you spoken uh, with him before, I have Claude? Um, I heard him speak live. I did not get to speak with him personally, but I heard him speak live many years ago, 20 something years ago. Um, he's got some, thanks for reminding me though, David. Uh, he has wonderful, um, uh, a video on YouTube. Uh, for those, um, I just put the mind map link. I did a brand, I did a, I took another mind map I had and I updated it and added a lot of new content. And the link is in the chat box for you early, for you early birds here. Um, if you'd like to see it later, it's good to have these reminders. I like using mind maps. I like, I like using word clouds, uh, th- uh, things like that. Um, they just, they just help me to keep things in perspective. Something I've been something I've been using a lot lately is um, uh, I don't know if you have it in your Android. I have a called remi- application reminder in my um, in my uh, iPhone, iPad, and everything. Reminder, and I can automatically by using Siri take my reminders and have them put into my iCal, my calendar. So I'll just say, "Hey Siri." Um, remind me to call Bill Pinnell at 1230 this afternoon and put it in iCal and boom, it'll just put it in my calendar and then it'll send me a notification reminder on all my devices that are synchronized. It's, it's pretty handy. I, I do a, on a daily basis, I do a things to do list, but I'm starting to digitize that because I always have either a watch or a phone or something like that in my hand. We forget things. Good morning, everyone. So um, let's go to open forum. Anybody have a question um, or, or a deal or something like that? Uh, raise yeah, your just, hand or hit the little button. I just David. have a com- I have a comment on your your word grouping. Um, what are those? What is it called when you have those positive um, a- uh, affirmations? Uh, having something like that with all of the positive words like that that you've done rather than the negative connection to sales. If you have that in front of you, if you look that over on a regular basis, those positive words become subconsciously connected to your image of what you think of yourself or you think of sales in general. So those positive words stay in your head rather than the negatives as an affirmation. Sure. Positive affirmations are good, but Going, uh, Brian Tracy used to say, how many people here like Brian Tracy? I, I really, I think Brian Tracy's psychology of success and, is, and sales, he, he did a very good one on sales, but his psychology of success audio, um, it's old and it's, and it's phenomenal. If you've never heard it, uh, listen to it. It's, it'll give you goosebumps. It's so good. And he says one thing that I kind of do disagree on. He says that every morning you should say your positive affirmations to the bathroom mirror before you start your day. Um, Good. I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> no, do you, listen, this is an open forum now. Do you agree or disagree that positive affirmations will get, will get you to success? No. Anybody? It's part of it. I don't think it's 100% obviously will do it. You got to take the proper actions behind oh, it, but having the right mindset helps and with I neuroplasticity think, we some of that is have to take control. the action absolutely i think i saw jessica and bill ladies first jessica you go ahead then bill have to unmute yourself no i think i think it's sorry i'm outside i'm kind of on the fly but i think it's a great way to start your morning with positive affirmations 
I find that exercise and up music make me feel good and get me to take action. Who said action? Bailey, before you've got to take action. Yeah. What is the what we what is the thing that's going to get you to um, the best positive result? Making a sale, right? How how do we feel when we make a sale, Bill Pinnell? Awesome. Very excited and going to the bank. It's it's like the second best feeling in the world, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, John Andrus will later on have a Zoom room and tell us what the first what is. The first. <laughs> okay. <Eating> chocolate. <laughs> what, what was that? Eating chocolate. <laughs> I would say eating chocolate or uh, is probably number three or four. It's got to be right up there. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> you're oh dangerous. He said that. Dangerous. Wow. <laughs> I think, Bill, go ahead. You had a question. No, I was just going to say when you ask, you know, the positive af affirmations, I think it's got to be accompanied with positive action because that's what has to, if you don't have the action, it doesn't matter. What, when you make a sale, when you, when that affirmation that leads to action, which leads to positive results, hopefully, what does that do to reinforce your confidence, your ability to, to do it over and over again? What happens? Don't you have to get the results eventually, yeah. Bill? Yeah, it starts snowballing. You just, it starts, you uh, build up more confidence and you just start increasing. Um, you're excited to get going and do it again and again and again. And that. Well said. Build I momentum. Momentum. Moment, yep. you've got to have that momentum and you've got to get to the results, the positive results. You've got to get the commission check. You've got to get the sale, the contract, the appointment. You've got to see positive results. This is why I'm so big on sales, because I think you go out there, you study, you knock on a million doors and you're not getting positive results, no matter how many affirmations you say. If you're not going to the bank eventually, after all the time, trouble, money and work you do, what happens? fail lose interest you lose momentum decreases yeah you quit yep you've got to see some result because once you see those results that reinforce wow it really works and it, it's got to work does it have to work reasonably if you go three months before you make a sale selling um selling your um pillsbury doughboy collection okay wow. i love this guy look at that belly um <laughs> <laughs> what what go ahead jessica oh no so i oh, i was okay. just I put something in the background there <laughs> um i think you got to get to the results and that's why i'm always talking about sales what questions role playing i role play you guys to death but by the way role play wednesday i don't know justin or, or i'm going to do role play wednesday uh, um on zoom uh, that's at zoomjustin.com I, that's at one o'clock. Oh, uh, one uh, is it one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, um, and that's always fun. But you got to get you got to eventually reasonably. Let's use the word reasonable. Get to those results. Make a sale. It just re it just makes you want to make more calls, more appointments, do more marketing because you're rewarded for it. We've got to we've got to create incentives, and we've got to get there eventually. It, it just, you know, can imagine when you make a sale, you're meeting nice people, you're enjoying the conversation it's, and, and work is stops becoming that four letter word. It just becomes something enjoyable to do. How much how, can you imagine making money, unlimited income, because you know the right words to say at the right time, you're selling the right product or service and um, you're you look forward to what you do every day. And how many people here have had jobs they don't like besides me? <laughs> and how many have, how many have had, uh, there's a movie they made about it. It's, uh, it's not called, it's Bosses from Hell is what I would call it. World's Worst Boss. Wasn't there a movie like that? About, about office, office Space. Office Space? Office Space, a classic. That's Everybody a must. That's a okay. must watch. <laughs> We've, we've all had, we all, have we all had jobs where we dreaded going to work or got that feeling on Sunday afternoon at four o'clock? Oh God, tomorrow's Monday. Oh, you know, is, don't we deserve better than that? Mm -hmm. I think we, I absolutely, I do. Let's go. Any other question? 
John Andrus, how's your golf score? John is a professional Florida golfer. You're you're mute, you're muted, buddy. Okay. But <laughs> anybody anybody else here have a question? <laughs> yeah. That's all right. I didn't. I like to keep it mute in case uh, I get calls or something. But uh, ah, that's what's okay. going on in you Florida? Know. Give us the Florida report. I, I'm hearing great things about Florida. Yeah, I wish no one found out about it. I'm down in Naples, uh, and it's uh, yeah. They're built. I don't know. It's just crazy what they're building down here. It's, uh, you know, 40 years ago when I started coming down here, it was a lot different, but uh, it is, it's really, uh, really booming. Too many people are finding out about it. <laughs> oh, the whole West coast. I don't know much about the East coast, but. Uh, Florida has always been an attractive place to the East coder, East coasters, Canadians, especially in the winter. You know, typically the, you would get more of the, on the East coast of Florida, you would get, you know, more of the people coming down from New York, New Jersey. And now on the West coast, you'd be, I'm from Cincinnati, uh, Ohio, Illinois, Midwestern, but it's, uh, man, it's growing. Got an, I think another congressional district or two, uh, by, of course we have no, no state income or yeah, no state income tax. It's great. Okay. What do you think of Cape Coral for investing? It was really good for a while. I mean, I think everything's so high now, it's hard for me to get my head around, the, you know, uh, the prices. So um, it, yeah, I'm very close to Cape Coral, but yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm waiting for a, a chink in the armor <laughs> to do something. Cause How, we've heard that for years. Yeah. Though, chink in the armor. Why, yeah. why is real estate? I mean, I, I just heard of a couple that uh, moved, to, they're moving to Las Vegas. I think Vegas has had a hundred days. Uh, Jessica, you have a place in Henderson. I think they've had a hundred days of over a uh, um, uh, hundred degree weather or something oh, like that. This summer. Yeah. No, but it was. Henderson and Summerlin are growing. Yeah, it's amazing. And growing very quickly. Real, yeah. uh, but real estate used to be a bargain in Florida, in Las Vegas, in a lot of different places. And what, what's going on? What's the culture shift we're seeing? Alex, you, you see in Colorado what's going right now i mean it's amazing i've got builders up here in a little mountain town the houses are sold before the first nail is in yeah mm -hmm. and i'm talking about five hundred thousand dollar and up starting homes wow i told you i told you guys i, t I said it about my friend of mine who bought a home for a half a million dollars three years ago she just sold it for 960 three years wow. almost doubled her money in three years Right home, right place, right price, right? Yeah. What do we what do we know? Hervic, what do we know about real estate on a long-term basis? That it's uh, it's always gonna trend upwards. Always, like. always. I mean it's gonna have its ups and eventually, downs. Eventually it trends up. Historically, I yeah. guess. Maybe right home, right, right home, right place. You will never get, I had this conversation with my son. I, I was in Fort Collins yesterday um, and uh, we had talking about investing in stocks and things like that. What is absolutely the best investment you'll ever make in your own, in your life financially? Your, your, own, home. your own home, your own home, your own, your own home, right, uh, right home in the right place. You get an extra hundred bucks that month, throw it against the principal. So instead of paying for 25 years, you knock it down to 17. Instead of going out to dinner, throw another $200 against the principal. Instead of buying another big screen TV, throw $500 against the principal. What happens to the amortization? It shrinks. Oh, tell, tell the story of your uh, greatest lease option. I don't you're know sitting, which one. The one you're you're sitting, you know my story. The one you're sitting in. Oh, Colorado, California here. Uh, no, Colorado. Um, I've had some good story. I have a lot of good stories on real estate. This is a home I'm in. Uh, we got it for three hundred thousand dollars on a lease purchase, five thousand down. Um, Twenty one years later, it's a multi million dollar home, two point something, two point six, free and clear, free and clear also. It was paid off in about 16 years. Had a good month, passive income. Build, if you can build up your passive income, live like a normal human being, okay, um, and you have extra disposable income that you can put savings, you can put into other properties that you can invest, or you can make increased payments to, uh, to increase your equity position in your own home. 
you, you're saving for the future. You're protecting yourself for the future. Just, it's just common sense. It's good stuff. Absolutely. Anybody else? Questions? Role play? Success stories? You guys are so quiet today. <laughs> who, who has anything? Well, Claude, I have something. I mean, it's just a deal I'm working on uh, still. Um, Go ahead. I, ha I have a lease option and it's on the higher end. So I'm getting a real tough time trying to get buyers. You know, the house is going for 700 actually listed. 725 is the lease option. That's what the seller would do. That's um, and what home worth? It's it's worth seven hundred, I think. I mean, I've okay. I've got I've got yeah, but no one's uh, no one's biting so far. It's been on the market. Why? Ask yourself why. What I, are you I, doing? Yeah, I, I I think well, here's the thing. As far as, I have somebody who wants to do a lease option, but not for that much. And this lady's having a tough time selling the house. So maybe maybe it's not quite there at seven. You know, maybe in this high demand. Man, this property's in New York or Long Island? Or Long Island, Island, yeah. Long, Long Island. Island. Real estate's exploding in Long Island yep. right now. Okay, tell us what homes go for in the Hamptons. Oh, we won't even go there. <laughs> I won't even go there. Millions of dollars, yeah. little homes. Amazing. So what is it? You've got to be empathetic, reverse near it. What is it in a hot market? Why is this home not selling? Is it the appearance, the condition, the location? Is it, you know... Is it next to a pit bull training school? Is it next to the LIE, Long Island there are some varying. There are some varying prices really close by. Some, you know, like the, there's some houses you can get for the mid sixes or even six, and they look sort of similar, but then some people have gotten seven for a, a similar type house. So there seems to be a little bit of gray area as the, as the range. So have you, uh, have you asked the people who have looked at the house, have you had a, a uh, 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 post uh, exit dialogue uh, with them. CT, could could I get your honest opinion? Why? What was it about this house that made you not attract? Well, yeah, the person who's interested, she's like, well, I see mid sixes and and stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah, I do see that. So it, it, it's it's kind of tough. It's tough to to say. So I don't know if I could really move her from where she's at. But this, I mean, I don't know if it's going to happen. The seller wants what she wants. She may be sitting on it forever. Okay, there's a reason though. There's a reason why that house is not selling and you haven't found it out yet. It, to me, it's uh, like I said, it's it's because I, I think things are uh, around the same price, uh, around the same type of house. And it's a okay. various range. It, it, you know, pricing is important too. it's got to be it's got to be relative to the market in the area. You want to yeah. if the same house, if we made this house 550 today, what would happen to the phone? Oh, you'd have 40 Hello. people on the phone. Okay. If we made it 600, 650. I think it's 650. You'd probably get five people or something like that. Maybe it's, it's always about supply and demand marketability analysis. Okay. Uh, what, what are people looking for? What's the demand out there? Is it, you know, what's the location, things like that. There's a, there's a reason. Why this home is not attracting enough call? Are you doing enough marketing on the home? Or well, on, my, on my end, I I've gotten over sixty requests, and most people are in the in the fives, five fifty as far as being able to afford. So it, this is on the higher end. I'm not getting the right kind of person mm. in as as a you know as a tenant buyer option. Okay, so your market. Is it, your market is in the half million dollar range, not in the 700,000 range. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the kind of tenant buyer that that's what I'm getting back. I mean, that, that makes sense to me. I don't know how else to attract a higher person. Work like $500,000 properties in, in that location, or, um, you know, this is a rent to own is the rent, uh, is the option money Are the terms attractive. Are you doing enough social media marketing? Are you putting out pictures, videos yeah. on a daily basis? I have Not an idea. A, yeah. Sometimes Go ahead, Jessica. applying to an international audience, an uh, um, international market can bring a new kind of Yeah, uh, that was, I was thinking about that. Do you know how, what's a good way of doing that? I was, because I mean, this, yeah. I would just contact, you know, an international realtor organization, like one that has presence in Europe and you know 
Um, Claude, can you think of the best international um, real estate I, organization I, for that? I, I, I get phone calls. Call. I, I, I use people. social media. I get people from all over the world who contact me through YouTube, through, okay. uh, through all social media. It's international. Hmm. Um, Maybe Sotheby's, though, if, you, if you're not established like you are yet or one of the higher end um, international well, I have it on, you know, I have it on Zillow and I'm doing Facebook and it's on all the other, you know, mar uh, marketplaces that Zillow. Uh, I, I would Google international, um, international real estate sales and see who comes up and contact them. You're strictly doing a, a lease purchase on this property, though. Something you've got to go back to the drawing board and ask yourself why you're not attracting the right people. Is it the pricing, the location or the way the property is? It, you know, there's a there's a reason why yeah. you're you're not getting the right people. So you suggest you go to that. Hey, I want to talk about uh, persuasion and influence today, particularly uh, uh, Robert Cialdini. Um, let me share my screen with you guys here right now. Someone's got some background noise, please. Thank you. Okay, can you guys see my screen here? Here's the book. Uh, by the way, uh, you can listen to the audio book. I, it, it used to be on YouTube. Um, and there's some good, also there's some good um, uh, speaking engagements by Cialdini um, on YouTube. Let's, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the top here. His first one, um, reciprocity. What do you, what, what is reciprocity? It's asking something back. You give something to the prospect. Uh, listen, I'm glad to answer your questions. Uh, I'd be glad to send you that information. I'd be glad to send you a contract. But could you do something for me, please? Could you do me this small favor? It's like getting an IOU, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Do you think, do we, do we use reciprocity enough? I don't think we do. I think we get in this little honeymoon phase with people and we don't ask them. When we're in that special honeymoon phase, we don't ask for, this is when we, we should ask for something back. Um, Mr. And Mrs. Prospect, I so enjoyed our conversation. Could you do me a favor? Could you get me back that a contract today at 4.30? Could you do me that uh, on or before 4.30? Would you, would you do that for me, Randy? Would you, while, you're, while you're eating that breakfast in front of all of us, you didn't bring, that, you didn't bring enough for everybody, though, did you? <laughs> Nobody brought me a bagel with uh, lox and cream cheese this morning. See, oh. the, te the teachers did influence you when you were a kid. Now it's stuck in your head. Oh, yeah. I, I'm easily. <laughs> <laughs> I am the easiest person in the world to sell. Why? What makes the prospect easy to sell? When you, can, appre when you can appreciate this, this, the way they're selling to you, if yeah. it's the way you want to be sold. Yeah. Alan, you jumped in there for a microsecond. Well, uh, No? Okay. Oh, I said emotion is what makes somebody easy to sell. I'm so easy. to. If you get me to like you, if you get me emotionally involved, you tell me a story. I get away. I always tell this. I, if, I get, uh, if I get a waiter, waiter or waitress and say, yeah, this is my extra job. My son wants to go to medical school and then join the um, uh, you know, uh, Peace Corps and stuff like that. So I'm working this extra job. He's a great kid and everything. What do you think? think happened to the tip of that waiter it was up. <laughs> up do do we love to reward people who take care of us or we feel uh empathy we understand what they're going through we see they're working hard okay yeah. yes what what <laughs> i'm gonna sound a little chauvinistic here we do when we have a hard-working pregnant waitress an obvious pregnant wait waitress <laughs> we give a big tip don't we yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, you guys know my one story here. Um, I, we, uh, I, I was uh, going out to uh, lunch with my wife and a couple friends, and we had a, a very young woman uh, with a protruding belly. And I said, when are you expecting? And she said, expecting what? <laughs> oh, no. We get that a lot. Uh, don't, uh, ever, uh, don't ever say it. Jake, don't ever Jake do that. Get that a lot. <laughs> I get, I get that. I get that every week. 
My friends, this is years ago. My friends still teach, uh, tease me about this. Claude, don't ever ask that question ever again. Right. Right. Unless you're a hundred percent positive, and I thought I was, uh, but say oh, yeah. next story. So I, I, I get that. I get that from the waitress. <laughs> <laughs> Even more important than getting people to repay you uh, because you did something for them, or you asked a favor, or you got an IOU, or you you go, hey, could you help me, Mister, Mrs. Pross? Could you help me out? Could you do this one little thing for me? Um, yeah, boom. At, it can't hurt to ask. Asking is almost like making an offer sometimes. Mm -hmm. It can lead to closing. It can lead to an offer. Scarcity. Number, uh, Cialdini has six big things. Reciprocity, scarcity, um, social proof, authority, and liking. I have a few others that I'm going to teach you guys today that we're going to talk about also. Uh, scarcity. That's a biggie. Scarcity. Um, when, they, when we say scarcity... Uh, we mean there's a limited supply or we have limited time um, or yeah. maybe uh, the supply or the, or the uh, delivery time. Mr. and Mrs. Prospect, I'm sorry, we have a big problem right now. Um, we only have two left of this model. It, you know, don't worry about it. a lot of people are looking for this particular model. Um, I'm not trying to influence you or, or you know, or anything, but uh, if you're looking for a car, or this particular model of TV, um, we only have two left. Right. And we may not get any more for another 60, 90 days. I don't, you know, what do you think happens when you tell people about scarcity? What, what, what goes through, through their head? An urgency. Do people want what they can't have sometimes. Hey, hey Claude, could, could you, you give us an example using scarcity with a seller? You go to the supermarket, you saw that they had a two for one special uh, coupon. Okay. And then you go there and uh, you, you wanted your big bottles of uh, diet Coke, uh, six pack, and they're sold out because it was a great buy. It was buy one, get one free. And you didn't really care, but you said, well, what the heck, maybe I'll take a look. And then it's sold out. What position sudden when you found out that everybody else bought it and there's no more supply in the store. Okay. Well, are you allowed to? Oh, sorry. You're kind of upset. You were kind of upset. And then you did you ever find yourself? You didn't really know if you wanted something. But then when you went to the store and it was sold out, that's almost a little bit of social proof, too, by the way. We'll talk about when everybody else wants something and the supply is limited or you discover the supply is gone. What happens to your desire to want have that or want that product? Increases it goes straight up, doesn't it? Yeah, it increases substantially. So when we're talking, when we're speaking to people, do you think we should? Um, can we use the scarcity of our time? Yes. By the way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Jessica, I'm sorry. Um, I know you're interested in my house and everything. I only have a few minutes here. I'm sorry. The phone's been ringing like crazy, um, and I have to show and I have to go and show it to some other people. I only have this one house. I had two more, but they went right really fast. And I think this one's going to be gone by Tuesday or when, maybe today. Um, so I'm sorry. I only have five minutes to answer your questions. For, please forgive me. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what goes on when we take, it's also called a takeaway. People love to avoid the loss. Is that, is scarcity emotional? Yeah. Yes. Very, very emotional. What's the million dollar rule about emotion? We talk about this all the time, the million dollars on emotion. What is it? People make immediate decisions emotionally and justify them later with logic. Can we make them emotional with scarcity? Mm, yes. All yes. the time. Okay. But you have to be a good actor. We'll talk about that. You have to really be, yeah, you have to play your role correctly. You have to be a good thespian, a good actor. We're on the stage with people. Okay, this is how you persuade and influence people. Uh, scarcity is a big one for me. How about consistency? Well, can I ask Get, a quick question about um, scarcity? Course. Are we allowed to embellish a little bit? Or what do you think about that where we're sort of... Embellish. I love that word, embellish. That's yeah. a $10 we're, word. We're Tell everybody... A little, you know, I've got one call this week, you know, is what you're really thinking, but... You're saying, I've only got a couple minutes because I got 10 calls today. You know, what about doing that 
to make ourselves seem a little more scarce than we really are. <laughs> what what do we get when we're speaking to people? Do we want to sound like one of a cast of thousands or do we want to make ourselves sound professional, unique and authority, which is uh, also we do we want to make ourselves a lot of these blend together. We, we also have to make ourselves an authority figure while using scarcity and reciprocity and consistency. You use a, a, a great word embellish. That's a $10 word, Jessica. Tell us what you think it means. It just means to kind of um, stretch the truth a little. When you're, when you're doing sewing, when you embellish something, you're, you're adding a frill or a, or a fur. You're adding kind of- Did you ever you have know, friends who just had a- Seinfeld did an episode where his friends had a really ugly- his friends had a really ugly baby. Okay. Oh. <laughs> What do you say to your good, your best friends who just had the ugliest kid you've ever seen? <laughs> oh, you say. Oh, I bet he's smart as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really? Oh gosh. Cute, cute feet. Cute feet. <laughs> Jessica, one of the one of the guts rules is uh -huh. act, is act like a millionaire. So. Uh -huh. I, I, well, what you saying, embellishing, I, I kind of put that, that goes with acting like a millionaire. Okay. Know. Okay. I understand. Yeah. You can, you can flower it up a little bit. You're, you're. Uh, I would say that the other thing is that don't we have to make a lot of calls? Aren't, aren't, don't, aren't we busy trying to make calls? So it, there's Absolutely. some truth into that. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's, just means you're putting a positive spin on it. You're not lying. I don't consider embellishing right. lying. I don't think you should lie. Right. In sales. Okay. Because if you lie, you're going to get caught. You're going to get caught. You're going to embarrass yourself. You're going to customers. It's not the way to sell. But when you tell us something, when you tell a story about a product or a service, when you paint a picture in their mind, is that pushing? Jessica, I could see you and your significant other in this home by the pool here. And you, you are just going to have so much fun. You're going to be, in a, you're going to be in one of those inner tubes on a nice sunny day, and you're just going to be enjoying each other, drinking martinis or margaritas and the pool, everything. Sun's out. It's going to be a rainbow in the sky, and and yeah. unicorns will come visit you. Is that <laughs> embellishing? <laughs> wow, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't have, have a problem with embellishing because you're putting the, you're putting a positive spin. Okay. To, um, to create demand. Okay. Now you can go, it comes in degrees. Great question, by the way. Excellent question. I, lo I love that. Anybody, yeah. Uh, so consistent, we were talking about consistency here. Can we get people to say yes? Uh, we call these micro commitments. I think I, I did a beer with Claude on micro commitments a couple of weeks ago. What happens when we get people to say step by little bitty baby step yeses? Yes. So, I, you know, oh, do you see yourself in a home in the next 30 days? Oh, yeah, oh yes. Oh, do, you haven't discussed this with your banker or mortgage broker, right? Uh, have you just have you thought about what kind of down payment? You know, and you're getting them thinking, asking questions and getting a little. Yeah. If you found the right home that met with your budget on a timely basis, yeah. how would you feel about that? What would you what would you do next? Oh, you know, we'd be, uh, you know, yes, 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 yes. What happens when people consistently say yes? They're on a roll. You're on a roll. And when we get to the big question, Jessica, what, uh, Alex, we, both Alex's, Dave, how, what would you like to do next if we could solve this problem in a timely manner that works with your budget and would solve all your problems and remove all that pain? What would you say to me next? Yes, let's do it. Yes. You've got to get into that ha positive habit of asking those kind of questions. Getting the yes rip, they say, what does that tell you right away? No, I haven't looked into my finances. No, I don't know if I have a down payment or option money. What does that tell you when they say no? What should you be doing? Getting off the phone. Or <laughs> maybe you get off the phone. If they don't have the money, and don't have a willingness to talk about it. I'll agree with you, Mr. Skolnick. Yes, change your, change phone. your tack so that you're going to get some yes answers. Like, yeah, if you're talking about money in the beginning and you're getting obfuscation, another ten dollar word, or you're getting someone uh, who doesn't want to talk about the money, should you just go on to your show presentation? No, no. you, you, um, you. 
you throw out multiple choice or uh, you use some type of uh, you give them some uh, something to choose from. Give them something to choose from. You better take care of the money up front. Why? Because if you spend hours answering questions, doing contracts, and the money is a big problem, they don't have any. They don't have the authority to spend money. Uh, they're waiting uh, to win the lottery or something. How much time should you spend with those people? Not very much. Not very much. That's when you get to politely fire the prospect. You can follow up with them. It's on their score, their EQ, they're a one through 10, they're a four because they don't qualify for whatever reason. That means maybe you call them and get back in 30, 60, 90 days. Sometimes situations change. Yeah. You set a follow-up system. But you've got to get that consistency. And if you get a no, you know it's time to fire the prospect politely and get out. See the power we have when we, when we utilize these different psychological triggers of persuasion. We have a lot of power. This power is not for us to bully people or intimidate them. We don't want to treat people any other way. That we want to treat people the same way we're treated, right? Yeah. Don't we have rights in the sales process where we can put a value in our time, knowledge, and energy? I always say that. Don't we have rights on that? What are successful? What are millionaire salespeople do that, that, others, that the other 99 struggling people don't do? They don't waste time with the prospect. They don't waste time with unproductive prospects or situations. Very good. Let's talk about social proof. Putting background noise from somebody. Yes, yeah, somebody, if you got a little background noise, please hit your mute. I'm I, love you. I love you to join in. Okay, there we go. Um, social proof. Social proof is a biggie. Uh, if you're if you go to a re if you're going to a restaurant and you get to the re and you you didn't know if you were going to go to one place or a chicken and seafood place or a steakhouse or a Thai restaurant and you go to the one rest and you go by the one restaurant and you see a long line what happens what what goes on in your what what goes on in those brain cells oh that place must be really good that must be good look at all, all those are we in Influence what other people buy, do, say, exhibit. Are we influenced by people's actions, words, things they purchase? You better believe it. It's a who are anybody here ever hear of celebrity uh, celebrity endorsement? Who makes that great little grill? That super uh, little grill. I think it used to be a George, George, George Foreman. George Foreman. How much? How rich is George Foreman now? Why do people buy? A George Foreman grill from a man who was a boxer, not a not a chef or any, he likes to cook. Okay, he likes to cook and he's got a great personality. Is George Foreman still around? I hope so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. He's Why worth about he's worth about four hundred million. At, at least wow. he's making more money selling products in wow. sales than he ever did getting into the boxing ring. Wow. At, why do people buy um, Air Jordans? Because Mikey it's wears cool. them. Because Jordan's cool. Yeah, because Michael Jordan wore them, right? Great yeah. basketball. Run faster and jump higher. Right. Like, oh, so we are like we PF flyers. Are we influenced <laughs> by celebrities? Uh, absolutely, we see them all the time on packages and things like that. They're like um, a role model to us, right? Uh, role models Claude, too. Claude, I got a quick question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Could you give us another example with using social proof with a seller? Like you're trying to buy a property from a seller. Mr. Seller, do you know why I'm successful? Do you know why I buy and sell a lot of houses? Why I'm driving that nice new uh, uh, XT8 outside your house? Do you know why? Uh, I, I don't know. I, take, a, take a guess. You're a smart man. Uh, well, I, I assume you're really good at what you do. I'm great at what I do, and I take care of clients, all my clients. And you, I'd, I'd love for you. Go. Would you like some? I know you're shopping around for the right realtor, right investor, right consult, consultant, right insurance agent, right finance manager right now. Would you like to speak to some of my customers and find out why they they constantly give me referrals, new customers, and why I do such a successful business? Would you like to find out why? Absolutely. Yeah. That, and, it, awesome. and after you speak to them today, what happens at our Zoom meeting at 430 this afternoon if they meet your expectations about the way I do business? 
I, I, you know, I, I think we have a deal. Think if everything, if if everything checks out, Claude, you seem like a great guy. You know, I thank we, you. We can appreciate that. I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. I want to earn your trust. I want to get you the right product, the, the right service. I return all phone calls. You know how you give somebody money or do a contract from you and then they ghost you? They disappear yes. because yes. they cash the check. I don't do business like that, sir. I look for long-term customer satisfaction. That's just the way I roll. I'd love to earn your trust and do business with you today. Can we move forward? Absolutely. Thank That's you, the- your gentlemen. Sir. That's gut selling. That's social proof. Well, how did I use social proof? I talked about all my other customers. What's going? What's going through, um, Mr. Real Estate, Mr. Cash Flow? Is it Mr. Real Estate? I don't have you in front of me here. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, Mr. Cash Offer, Chris. Mr. Cash Offer. I, I said, what do you think's going through his mind when I talk about all my other customers that come back to me, do more business with me, send me referrals? What do you think happens? Can you make it romantic? Can you make it emotional? You know, sir. Build trust and the trust. Yeah. Oh, and that's by the way, what you just said. Cialdini doesn't have that word trust in his um, six psychological triggers. He does say we'll move down to liking or likability. How important is it? Do you ever have somebody who had a good product or service did not like them? Mm. Did you find a way to? go around them, buy it from someone else, or just say no, or, yes. or manipulate them. Okay. What happens when, how hard, and here's one of these areas I have a lot of trouble with. Most sales trainers talk about bonding and rapport. They just say bonding and rapport. What happens if it's not authentic? If it's not sincere? It just feels like a con. Give me one second. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It feels like you, a con. You've got to get people to like you. Liking is so important. Do you think you get people to like that role play I just did with Chris before? Was I dramatically, you heard the drama. There's a little bit of schlockiness, a little acting in there, okay? But was I being unbelievable? This is part of guts, being unbelievably to the point and straightforward, honest. What happens when you meet that in the character in business? I think it's attractive, not to everybody. Oh, he's too confidence, yeah. whatever, you know, but I think to a lot of, you know, when I get an honest salesperson, I love that person. I don't just like them. I love them. I trust them. I yeah. want trust. I wait. I even want somebody when you get to likability, do you think you can get likability or even more important trust when you say to somebody, you know what can, um, uh, uh, Miss, Miss Prospect, can I tell you the truth here? I think you're making a mistake. Would you like to know why? Can I tell you the truth? I promise you won't get too mad at me. I think this is the wrong house for you. It's too small. It's in the wrong, it's in the wrong location. Um, you told me you're starting a family. You're going to have kids near. You're going to, it's too far away from the schools. The crime yeah. statistics are not the best here. I'm, 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 maybe I'm killing, maybe I'm killing the sale. Do you mind me telling you the truth or should I sugarcoat everything and just make you feel good today? You know, earn their respect and trust when you, when you do that. Yeah. Don't you don't you love a financial advisor or car salesperson or real estate? A lot of people in real estate here who tells you the tr- truth and who gets right to the business in me, okay? Or you know, I'm a New Yorker, tra- uh, a New Yorker who moved to New Jersey and then moved to California. California is the Let's Up Lunch crowd. It, they should allow New Yorkers and New Jersey people to come to California because we have a field day in sales there. <laughs> I'll tell you why at another Zoom meeting. Liking is important. Stroking, nurturing. How many times have we talked about a stroke, a compliment, a nurture, where you speak sincerely, honestly, dramatically to people? That when you have <laughs> commonality, when you have commonality, you know, Bill, uh, Bill Pinnell, Bill, do a quick riff. Bill, have you ever read this book uh, uh, from uh, Influence, The Probability of Persuasion? Have you ever read this book? All right, Claude, that that would, is an excellent book to read. What, didn't you love his chapters on different? I love the introduction on this thing. What, what was your favorite part on it? Well, um, I like how he goes through uh, how to uh, be have reciprocity when they're dealing with 
uh, other. I love, that. I love that part too. Oh, that was a great. What are we doing right now? Total strangers talking Connecting. about a book we both read. A bond rapport. There's a bond. What happens when you walk when you bond with another person? There's what like happens? Likeability. Yeah. What happens to the math, the algorithms of persuading, of getting a contract, a sale, a check, what a credit card? What happens when that person likes you and you bond? Uh, you you get their business and you, and they may refer people to you. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it much easier, doesn't it, when you get that likability. We have to work on that. Using stroking and nurturing is the way uh, I, I get people to like me or I try to find some kind of commonality. But if it's forced, if it's artificial, if it's ersatz, it's not going to work because the prospect is going to push you away because they feel they're going to feel manipulated. Everybody has met that salesperson. Absolutely. Absolutely. What did we, uh, authority figures. Let's, uh, that's the only one. I think that's the last one left here from Cialdini authority figure. Why is that so important in persuasion when you're speaking to somebody? Why should you take that role of the authority? You want them to feel like, you know, what you're talking about. You've got experience and, and you're, you know, in the know in the wiser for, advising them yeah one of my favorite lines jessica can i tell you the truth or should i just make you feel good today <laughs> just make me feel good. Well, being tell an authority me. jessica you know what i've been doing real estate for years and i think i think the, on this particular deal we should strike you're not sure how long your company is going to keep you here which i would recommend in your best interest that we structure it as a two-year rent to own which means that in the next 24 months if you know your company is going to keep you here you can buy the home but if not if they move you to somewhere else is does that make sense i hope you don't mind me speaking so direct to you no i know most people would rather just sell it to you but i want to make sure you do the right thing here all right thank yeah. you when you go when you speak with an authoritative tone what is an authoritative tone anyone like a doctor, like you know what you're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Is that does an authority figure sound confident? Yes. Yeah. I can. If you're taking notes, one of the most important words in sales in persuasion is confidence. What happens? Well, I don't. Um, well, um, gee, um, Randy, I don't know if it's this is going to work. Uh, I've never <laughs> done this before. They say I, I read it in a book somewhere. I'll give it my best shot. What's what happened? Is that an authority figure? Is that what an authority figure sounds like, or someone who's a little bit wimpy? Uh -uh. Wimpy. Yeah. Do we? What do we say to that person who's a little bit unsure, or un, uh, uh, is is not being totally direct and honest with us, using their knowledge and, and everything? What What do they say? I'll think about it. I'll get uh, back to you. Let me some. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jess. Oh, I was just saying, I'll get back to you. They say, you know, I'll, I'll get, get back, back to you. you. You don't make money. When you speak to people confidently as an authority figure, you tell stories, you bond, you get likability. You bond it with social proof. I, this is the way I take, I have other customers, that, things like that. This is the way I've been in business. This is what I do. This is how I do it. My customers like me. Uh, could you do me a small favor? And give me something back. Oh, we have a limited supply. I have a limited amount of time. This is in your best interest. Can you can, can how do you feel about that? Can you say yes to the deal? Consistency. When you put these all together in your words, in your questions, in your stories, what is the likelihood of making a sale? Much higher. Increases. Yeah. It increases substantially. What are the things that I think Cialdini is missing? Let's talk about that a little bit. Can you guys see my screen here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, these are some of the things I wrote down. Um, I, I think different, we have to rec recognize different ego states in people, the adult, the child. I've talked a lot about Dr. Eric Byrne, games people play. I'm okay, you're okay. There are different ego states. Ego states are very emotional. You want to recognize that. If the, is that prospect a child? Are they, um, are they a parent where they're either nurturing you or very critical to you? Or are they an adult? They're non-emotional. Uh, they want a nice adult to adult dialogue. Don't we love those 
when we're talking with people and there's that mutual respect and we're making a connection, don't we love that? Do we have to recognize the state where the prospect is trying to bully us or act immature or manipulate us? We've got to recognize these different emotional states. I could do a seminar just on that alone. Uh, we need to, Cialdini doesn't talk about it, but we, we have to, I got a spelling error there, I hate that. Uh, we, have to, we have to create different emotional states. Back to that million dollar rule, who said it earlier? People make decisions emotionally when they get emotionally involved. It's the million dollar rule. If you just give them features and benefits an intellectual gobbledygook, you're going to get, I'll think about it. It's all day long. And they're just going to compare apples and apples all day. But when they get emotional and you bring in all those different it, things that we spoke about today, your chances of closing go through the roof. Storytelling. Why are stories so important in sales, in persuasion, in getting people emotional? Uh, it helps them feel the pain of, yes. of what they need, that greed or fear. Yeah. Yeah. We have to be a thespian. An actor, we're on the stage with somebody. Are we responsible for not getting, we want to keep ourselves, I have it down here, controlling your emotions. We want to make the prospect emotional. We can't get emotional. Do we play a role not to be manipulative or controlling, but to get the prospect comfortable? Should we play that role? What, is, what kind of personality does a prospect in your business, ask yourself this question, what is the personality that that prospect is looking for in order to do business? I'm looking for someone I like and someone I trust and someone who speaks straightforward to me. When I get somebody who dances around a question or obfuscates the question or doesn't acknowledge a good question or doesn't say thank you to me, by the way, how important is it to say thank you? recognize things like, you know, great question. Thank you for asking. Oh, I love, you know, so important to be a good actor in sales, to play the, even, if you're having a bad day and you, and, and that prospect senses you're having that lousy day, you're going to make a sale. How does someone, how does someone successful sound when they're speaking to a prospect? What does a successful, happy person sound like? Hey, let's dance. Let's have some music. Hey, how's your day going? I'm having a great day. Why are we talking today? Let me, if you got a problem, tell me about it. Maybe I'll offer you a few solutions. I, maybe I can help you. Okay. Genuine and confident. Confident, genuine. I like that word. You got good words today, Jessica. Thank you. You're a wordsmith. Always good words. Words are so important in prosperity. Yeah. Words are, words are, you got to be a wordsmith. Yeah. yeah the right words. At the right time, the right stories, the right questions can make you wealthy beyond comparison. Anyone else? It's about the right words at the right time. Uh, vanity. Do you think we should talk to people about vanity? Is that, I threw that in there. When you go to somebody, if you were selling cars, what you just say, and you're selling brand new, beautiful Lexus cars or, or something like that, what do you think you should say to that person? How do you, how would you affect people someone's appeal vanity? to their vanity? It's okay. You, you would look beautiful in this car. This, this oh, would I, I don't know. I've always been driving, you know, I've been driving my little uh, explode on rear impact Pinto here. Uh, <laughs> um, sometimes people don't like to get in the car with me though. <laughs> <laughs> this would just complete your look, this beautiful new Tesla in red. Oh yeah. It doesn't have a, it's Too not bad. a, it's not a convertible, is it? We do a convertible model. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Tell people, you know, using that vanity. Is, that, is vanity in sales important? You better believe it. How about Dave uh, Skolnick brought this up in, in the Skype group. Feigning ignorance. Is that a cycle? Is that a way to get closer to a sale? Should we answer every question they give us? No. Brandon Carswell, what do you think? Should we answer every question? I know every question you're going to answer. Ask me, Mr. Carswell, or should we use three words once in a while? Never answer any questions, all the questions they give you. Ask, ask questions. Ask questions. What's the best answer to a question? A question. You know the, you know the answer, but you want to get more information. A question. 
What, what's those? What's my three favorite words? Uh, I don't know, Claude. Uh, what, what should we say? <laughs> see, he's, he's using my own shit against me. I love it. Uh, <laughs> act, act, act ignorant. I don't know. Act ignorant. I love it. Some. Why should we feign ignorance right here? Why should we feign ignorance sometimes? Are we salespeople? We're supposed to know all the answers to all the questions. Why would it be strategically to our advantage to say, I don't know? Great question. Oh, Alex Galgulian. Great question. I'm I, Now, Alex, I don't know. I'm not sure if I know what you meant or uh, what. Why did you ask that particular question? Great question. What, why did you ask that one, Alex? It must be important to you. Help me out. Uh, show we're human, maybe? Or? Alex. Yeah. <clears throat> I know it's, it's a great question. I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, well, you brought up about price. You have a budget for anything in view. A lot of times when I buy something this expensive, I think about what it's going to cost me per month. That's not something you're considering, right? Uh, yeah, actually, um, the finance is important to me. You know, good for you. Finance is important. Do you have a, a round numbers, 500, 750, 1,000 a month for this brand new Lexus? Um, yeah, what, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, 600. 600 a month. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I can. I, I got to talk to somebody. I'm not sure. But if, if we could get it close to that 600 or less <laughs> or dollars more, if I could get it somewhere in there, how would that make you feel? Well, yeah, that's, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, and, and if we could get that within your budget, the right car, so that you make more money and you're say, uh, as a realtor, as a salesperson, and it works within your budget, over you know, um, what would how would you feel about that? What would happen next? I, I'd say yes. Yeah, let's go. I'm sorry. What? I'd say yes. Let's. let's oh, let's thank you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You know, I like doing business with you. You're a straightforward, honest guy. Thank you. I don't get a lot of I don't get a lot of customers like you. It's really a pleasure to do business with you. Thank you. Stroking nurturing, feigning ignorance, put it all together, okay? This is how you get people to yes. You've got to control your emotions sometimes. What happens when we get, pardon my language, when we get pissed off, we get, a, we get this nudnik, this irritating, this, this, this person, this, uh, what do we call them, a, a gadfly. You know that fly that, that keeps buzzing around your head and you keep swatting and it keeps following you in a matter of mouth. Did you ever get a customer like, did you ever get a prospect like that? Randy's shaking his head while he's driving there. I know he has. <laughs> Have we, what, should we, when we get somebody who, who we don't like, how should we act? Tough question. Somebody else speak. Somebody who hasn't uh, spoken up before. Hervik, you jump in here, buddy. What happens when we get a client, we don't like them? How should we act? How should you act when you don't like a client? You don't like them, but you're, yeah, you don't like them. They're irritating. They're annoying. They're disrespectful, but you're close to making $50,000, but you don't like this. You don't like this person. Should you get emotional? How should no, you? No. You got to just suck it up, suck it up and stay focused. Because what happened? Because what happens after you make that sale and you get that $50,000 commission check? What yeah. happens? All that stuff goes out the window. It all goes away, baby. Who really wins when you control your emotions? And maybe I'm not saying that someone who goes, I mean, really rude or something. Like sometimes you got to step on their toes a little. You know, I've had people who said things inappropriate. And I, I told them, I said, that, you know, that's uncalled for. That's, unappro that's inappropriate. Let's, uh, let's not use that kind of, let's not use that kind of politics or statements or things like that. It, it, there's a, this is a time and a place to do that. But if you're hungry and you got bills and you just got someone who's just plain annoying. Yeah. What do you yeah. Suck it up. Stay Suck focused. it up. You're to do. I, I like that. I like that. How important is trust? We talked about that earlier. Cialdini doesn't talk about trust as much. He talks about, he talks mostly about uh, likability there. Liking. I, I think what happens when we get trust, do, if we get trust, is it over? Yes. What happens when you, has anyone ever here met a salesperson or a professional and you trust them implicitly? What do you do with the information or the products or service they're trying to sell? What do you do? You just go with it. You sign or you do whatever. Mm -hmm. They have credibility. Trust is where you should, that, trust is the mountaintop. 
likability is how you get up there. But if you can get to the big mm. team, once you get trust, it's it's a blank check. Absolutely. Uh, should, what about confidence? We talked about that earlier. We're going a little bit over here. Um, conf- how important is it to have confidence in sales? Do we like, I like confident salespeople, not braggarts, not braggadocio, not I, I, somebody's trying to play, try and top this, but I like, do you like people who speak assertively to you about a product or service or whatever you're interested in? I like confidence in salespeople. Why is that? Because you know they believe in what they're saying. You know, you know that they're one hundred percent sold on themselves already. They're so they're, they're so already so it's easy for them to sell you. Because how about, you, how about this word, Claude? They're knowledgeable. Knowledgeable is good, but I'm going to some when they have confidence, or let me use another word: when they have passion. When they say, you know what, you know what, um, uh, you Mr. and Mrs. Prospect. I bought, I have, I bought the same product and I love it. It's great. I wouldn't sell it to you if I didn't use it myself. That's how good it is. I just sold one. I just referred one to my mother-in-law and, you know, I want to make sure she's in a good, safe car. And you, you're, you guys are looking for a car that's attractive, that's in your budget and you have three kids. Okay. I want to put you in a nice, safe car, just like I did for my, for all my customers. What is that? When you speak a certain like that, with that kind of confidence, I think it, uh, with that kind of passion. Assertiveness. <laughs> assertive. I don't know if that's a word. Help me out. Is that, assertiveness. Uh, assertiveness. That's it. That's it. That's the word. <laughs> we're, we're out of time here. Um, one of the things I'm working on is altered states, power of suggestion, uh, painting stories and pictures in, their, in people's minds. Uh, things like using the five senses that we talked about, smell, taste, touch, putting, putting that picture in their mind and to their subconscious. Can that have an influence uh, on, the, on, this, on persuasion? You better believe it. And I, I think I'll see for another time. Um, did we learn? Was this okay today, guys? Was this a good topic? Yes. Great, yes. Topic. Great topic. Thank you. Thank you. We went a little long, but I wanted to share this with you. Everybody have a wonderful, any well, last minute, la, one last quick question before we go. Anything else before we go? We got a lot of people on here today. Yeah, just um, on in a, the, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, on a side note, I was asking what, what mind mapping software is that I, I like I like the way that 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 uh the, the mind, mind your mind mapping stuff. I, I like how you did that. The mind map is in the chat box, and I'll also post it in the private Skype group we have. Uh, you can download it uh, online. I use a system called Mind Node, N-O-D-E. I love it. Uh, all my mind maps, I'll show you when, when we close out here with the music, I'll, I'll show you all my mind maps that I've developed with this oh, one cool. simple piece of software. And I can do it on my I can do it on my iPad, on my iPhone. It's, and it's not expensive. It's it's very, I forgot what I paid for it, $35 or something like that. And how we'll do, um, I think maybe next week we'll talk about mind mapping and things like that. Ooh. <laughs> I, I think it's important to, what happens when we have that great idea and we don't write it down or we don't put it in a mind map or, a, or, or something, we lose it. Could be that one idea. The battery powered car, you know, it could be something is something great. That's why I, I, it's like I can see your thoughts like evolving, how, how you break stuff down and how you get so much clarity. And how you, you know, I, 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 I see that in your mind. I'm like, wow, that's, that's phenomenal. And that you was know, a can... wonderful stroke, Brandon. You really learned well from today. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot. I'll show the mind maps as we close out. Everybody um, have a wonderful, safe week. Uh, Enjoy. We're getting fall here, man. All these golden and red leaves out here in Colorado right now. It's really beautiful. Have a good week. Sell something. Speak to five people today. Ask, you know, make sure uh, make sure you're using all the different techniques of persuasion that we uh, that we discussed today. OK, because nobody deserves success more than you good people. Claude Diamond saying goodbye. Have a great week. Hey, Claude. We're going to do a little.